In today's wood story, we are building this simple cross-cutting sled that has a key safety feature that you do not want to be without. So grab your tools and let's start this wood story. I am finally making my very first cross-cutting sled. I know lots of woodworkers who love these things as they are very versatile. But up until now, I haven't really had the need between my table saw and my miter saw. However, I have a project coming up that requires very accurate cross-cutting of smaller pieces. And I'm not comfortable making these cuts on my miter saw as I won't be able to clamp these pieces down. So it's time to build a cross-cutting sled. And it will measure approximately 2x2 two two feet when done. And the wood that I'm using for the base is about half of an inch thick. You can go ahead and grab the plans down in the description if you would like all the measurements in both imperial and metric. The sled needs to ride in the table saw tracks. So I measured mine and found some white oak that was already square and cut it to size the best I could. I used my planer to get it to be the right thickness, making many very small passes to avoid its shattering. You can also add thin pieces to a sled to prevent them breaking. I did do another video on that topic recently that explains that, which you can check out right here. With the thickness correct, I could cut them down to the final width and then double check that they fit perfectly into the tracks of my table saw. You want them as snug as possible without rubbing. I have my base all cut to size. Really, it's just whatever size that I had. So that's the size that I'm gonna go with. And now I'm gonna start working on the back fence and the front fence. And I have this perfect piece here, but I want to make it twice as wide just to give it extra support. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some inserts. But in order to make it a lot easier for myself, what I'm going to do is I am going to cut two pieces of this. And I'm essentially going to line it up like that. And then I'm going to put the T-trike in between. And then I'm going to do another piece right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to ensure that I don't have to router out a T group after the fact. Um, so I'm going to save some time. Now, the only downside with this is that this wood is technically too thick. So it is going to kind of be inserted um, or I can have it come further out. I can just add a little spacer in between. I'll have to decide what I want to do with that. Ideally, I would just be using uh, my half of an inch plywood, but I don't have any more of it. So I'm just going to use what I had. You'll need to decide where you want to add your T-track to your back fence. I personally wanted to make sure that my blade would never have a chance of touching the T-track made from aluminum. And this is because I have a saw stop table saw. And if my blade cuts aluminum, my brake is going to activate, which means I'm going to have to spend 150 bucks on a new brake. And I really want to avoid that. I ended up placing the T-track two centimeters from the top. If you want yours further down, you can also pre-cut your T-track into two pieces slightly smaller than the width of your fence and then lay them as individual pieces. This would also solve the issue, but I didn't think about it until later on. With all the pieces for the back fence and front fence cut to size, I started the glue up just using regular wood glue. I used the T-track as a spacer for the back fence but I did make sure not to get glue on it as I still want to be able to remove it. We'll attach it properly later on. I found the perfect little space of piece. I just cut it to size. So I'm gonna put that in here. And then when I put the T-Trag in, it's gonna make it literally almost flush, like within like a mil of a difference. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to align the bottom rails with this top. So the first thing that I did was I make sure to mark the middle. And because this is two feet, it's exactly one foot. Then I took my fence right here and I set it to one foot, but I do have a thin C blade on right now. So that's something to keep in mind because if I use a different blade with my cross cutting sled, I'm actually going to end up increasing the size. So I either have to stay consistent and use the same blade or next time I change my blade, 
I'm going to have to account for the fact that it will be slightly off. And what I mean by that is that the groove that the blade cuts in the cross-cutting slant essentially ends up giving us a zero clearance insert. But when I go and change my blade to be a full-size blade, that groove will be made bigger. It's not a big deal, but it is something to keep in mind if you switch back and forth between the blades regularly. With my slit being 60 centimeters wide, I'm setting my table saw fence to 30 centimeters in order to use it to align my slit in the exact middle. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna keep that this. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add these little spacer pieces. They're just little nuts because I want to raise up my guardrails so that I can glue them in place. So I'm gonna put that here and then I'm gonna line this up so that I can still see it because I have lots. I have, these are way too long, which is perfect. I wanna be able to see them, have some overhang. Then I'm gonna make sure my blade is completely lowered so that it is down now because I've already met the middle. And we've already done this, so I'm not gonna to touch the fence. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add CA glue and activator. And then I'm very carefully going to place this down so that it is like this. That way it is completely flush against my fence, and in theory, that should make it uh, square. Now, we will make it completely square so we actually get the front rail on. Don't worry too much about that right now. But let me get some CA glue and activator. Before attaching the rails to the bottom, I made some marks to indicate where to spray the activator for the glue. Then I added the glue and carefully but quickly placed it on top, right up along the fence of the table saw. That was stressful. With the rails glued in, I tested that they would slide easily in the tracks. Mine did stick a little, but I will hand sand them down a tiny bit later on. I attached the rails fully by adding screws that I countersank into the wood so that they won't interfere with the base. Because the rails were made oversized, I used a hand saw to remove the excess. The glue was all dry for the front and back rail. Because it's two pieces glued together that can easily shift even with clamps, I wanted to make the pieces completely square again. I would recommend just cutting it on the table saw by just removing a sliver of material but I recently got some new hand planes and I wanted to test them out. So I had some fun doing that. Because I need to hold the back fence when I use the sled, I wanted to make it feel nice. So I used my router table with a roundover bit to soften the edges. There was just one problem. So I just rounded over this part and I did it the wrong way. <laughs> I was supposed to do the top and I did the bottom, which is annoying. So I need to do the top now. And then I will have to probably cut off a little bit at the bottom. And I'm just borderline right now about clearing it. Remember how I didn't want the uh, fence to be, or the blade to be touching the aluminum. So, if I'm in any danger, then I'll probably keep this. <laughs> and if I'm not in danger, then maybe I'll cut it off. Uh, let's see. Either way, I'm going to round over this one now, which is the right side to do it on. With this minor hiccup, I continued on. I cut the back and front reel to final size to match the bottom. The front reel I attached with CA glue and activator and screws that were countersunk again. Make sure to keep those screws far away from the middle where the table saw blades will run. I used a small hand plane to cut a 45 degree angle on the back fence. 
This will allow small amounts of sawdust to have a place to go instead of getting trapped and potentially pushing the workpiece to be cut outwards when making multiple cuts. For the back rail that holds the T-track, it's really important to get it square to the blade. Otherwise, all of your cuts will be wrong every time you use this cross-cut sled. So for this part, you want to take your time and get it right. With the sled placed in the table saw grooves and the front fence already attached, raise your table saw blade slightly and then turn on your saw. Then push the sled down gently and make sure that you stop when you reach the middle of the sled and turn off your saw. Then flip over your sled and pre-drill multiple holes. Again, using a countersink bit and with the screws far away from the middle. Attach the back fence with just one screw on either the right or the left side. This way the fence can still swirl. Now flip your sled over again on top of the blade and raise your saw blade enough so that you can use a carpenter square that's not touching the teeth of the blade, only the blade itself and then line the other side up against the fence that's still able to move. And once you're confident that it is completely square, you can attach another screw on the other side to secure it. I don't recommend using glue because if you're wrong and if it's not square, you can still fix it. But if you use glue, then you're kind of screwed. And finally, once you're sure the sled is completely square to the fence, you can turn on the table saw again and run it all the way through the end. Just make sure to keep those hands far away from the blade as it comes out the other end of the sled. Safety is always a top priority in my shop. And this sled does pose a danger if your hands are not in the right position. So I built a safety feature that will help. I took two pieces of plywood and glued them together. Then I cut a curve on the one end and then I spray painted it red before attaching it to the middle of the sled. I just used CA glue and some wood glue. That's all that was needed here. But the idea is that the red represents the no touch zone. And as long as my hands are not touching the red, I am in no risk of the blade ever cutting my hands. In order to make the rails underneath the sled run as smoothly as possible, I added some Minwax, which really helped. Then I added the T-Tracks, and I decided to use my four smaller leftover pieces of T-Track instead of my one large piece. This also meant that my T-Track had a small space in the middle of the sled, and that was okay with me, as after all of the concern of the saw blade possibly touching the aluminum, I could have just done this from the beginning and placed the track anywhere in the back fence, and that way it would have never had a chance to touch the aluminum. Live and learn. With the T-Track in place, my finishing touch was making a quick stop block using a square scrap piece of hardwood that I drilled a hole into, and then I used a T-bolt to run through it. And with that, this cross-cut sled was done and ready to be used for my next project. Now that I have this sled, I can see why woodworkers love them, and I have a feeling that I'll be making a few more in different sizes over the years. But for now, this one is going to be great for cross-cutting, especially those small pieces that I just wouldn't feel comfortable cutting on the miter saw. So let me know, what do you tend to use your cross-cut sled to cut? Is it in place of a miter saw? Or why do you use a cross-cut sled? Thank you so much for watching. For more great do-it-yourself projects, check out these videos. And I'll see you soon in the next Wood Story.